yes sir can we start in the previous class we were discussing advantages and disadvantages of automation and now moving on to our next topic we are having applications of automations so you all know that the automated equipments can be employed to produce the different kinds of parts with the help of the uh, these automated machines and these uh, different kinds of parts can be produced in the large volumes whereas it was not possible in the in the earlier times because if you want the variety the production may have reduced or you cannot produce the large uh, different kinds of products in the large quantities but with the help of the automation in the industry you can produce the discrete parts in the larger volume also and the applications of the automations is also vary from the different kinds of flow lines different kinds of assembly lines different kinds of uh, automated guided vehicles or computer handling systems different kinds of uh, sorry metal work uh, operations like process planning designing the data collection the all mm, is happening with the help of the automations so you can see the some of the automations uh, applications are being related in the following or in showing slides we will be discussing various applications so moving on to first application of the automations so first how the industry is becoming automated or how the automation is being employed to the different sections of the industry and with these different sections of the industry the whole of the industry is becoming automated and it is competing in the global market and meeting the challenges uh, meeting the challenge of the uncertain market meeting the customer preferences providing the products at the shorter lead time providing the product at the least cost or you can say optimum cost with the superior quality so first is the automated flow lines you can see automated flow lines can consist of number of machines which are being linked to the automated transfer devices carrying the raw materials at the one end or transporting the raw materials from the one end to other end transporting the operation when whenever the number of operations are performed on the particular machines then we have to transfer that product onto the next machines let us say we have to produce 10 kinds of operations on a single specimen and we want to produce and uh, you needed only three machines to produce this particular part so let us say the first machine is performing four operations second machine is performing three operations and so on the third machine is performing last three operations of, of the specimen so whenever the first four operations which have been performed on the first machines then the specimen has to be transferred to the next machine so these automated flow lines will help in the movement of the material from one part one location of the shop floor to the next location that is from the one machine to the next machine let us say our first machine is performing four operations and as soon as the four operations are been performed the worker is required to uninstall that specimen from the machine and has to place the specimen on the flow line then that flow lines are transporting that work piece from the first machine to the second machine let us say the machine can be at the same ground level in the same shop floor or it can be in the upper level so let us say the first machine is placed at the ground level and the second machine or the third machine in which the operations from 4 to 10 are to be performed are being placed in the first floor of the shop floor so we require uh vertical conveyors we require the vertical flow lines to transport the material from the ground level to the first floor so these are the automated this is happening only due to the help of the automated flow lines so these are of two kinds one are the inline and second is the rotary work pieces or the uh, rotary automated so inline is basically whenever the material is flowing in the straight line or you can say there is a turn of 90 degree or an acute angle turn from one location to other location so this is that turn of acute angle or turn of right angle degree is only due to the space constraint that is if there is uh, a wall or pillar may comes after that straight line then we have to rotate that flow line from one angle to the other angle and has to transport them from one point to another point so this is these flow lines are basically designed as per the specifications or the space constraints of the particular shop flow whereas the rotary uh, flow lines are basically 
in which let us say a, a, a work, single worker is controlling five machines and it has to transport the paper from one machine to another machine and has to perform let us say 25 kinds of operations on the single specimen whenever he is uh, transporting or performing let us say five operations have been performed on each of the machines whenever he is he is uh, he has performed five first five operations and he has to place that a uh, specimen on to the to move on to the second machine on to the flow line so that it can move on to the second machine and as soon as he has placed on that so there in that case this five machines are in placed in the circular manner or in the rotary manner on to the dial index machine so this these types of machines are called dial index machines and the workpiece are kept on the rotating table which is being providing the specimen from the one machine to the other machine and feeding that specimen to the all kind of machine so that all kinds of operations has to be performed on the specimens so workpiece are basically kept on the rotating tables which are being at the uh, fixed locations because machines are at the fixed locations and the, only the table or the conveyor is being rotating and feeding the specimen at, at the desired locations so these uh, lines are basically being used whenever Uh, we are producing same kinds of specimen. There is no variety being required from the customer side or from the R and D department. And also, we are producing the same kind of product in the bulk quantity or the larger quantity. And also, we are achieving very high rate of production with the help of these arrangements. But whenever there is a change in the variety, whenever there is a change in the customer demand, whenever change in the production demand. Let us say earlier we were producing thousand. Number of products of the similar kinds, but here the demand has to reduce. Like in these pandemic days, we always have seen that industries have been shut down due to the uh, COVID lockdown. Uh, the industries have to be shut down, and the demand has been because the purchasing power of the customer has reduced because there was no income for the uh, businessman, there was no income for the private uh, employers or private employees. so there is we always be decrease in the purchasing power of the customers in that uncertain conditions there will be a certain or you can say uncertain there is no uh, future certainty that how much is the demand comes from the customer size so i was saying that if earlier the demand from the customer of the, of the same kind of product was 1000 uh, number of products in one month but nowadays due to this Uh, uncertainty of the pandemic, the demand may have reduced to, let us say, hundred to hundred fifty products per month. So, due to this reduction in the production level, or the any if there is any variation in the design or any uh, variation in the design of the specimen is being required from the customer side, then only inline flow lines are being preferable. Then you can have you have to install the inline. automotive flow line in your industry but if your industry is uh, designed in such a way or it is a industry it is a type of industry which is only producing the similar kinds of products and in larger quantity then the rotary flow lines can be installed in your industry but the time is uncertain so for uh, building an industry or building any plant or building any shop floor you must have the facility of automated inline flow lines that's why because in this inline automotive flow lines you can adjust the variety you can adapt the variety you can adapt the uncertain government policies you can adapt government uncertain uh, customer demand you can uh, you can adapt any type of uncertainty in the inline automated flow lines whereas the rotary automotive flow lines cannot be used for any variation in whether in the customer demand or whether in the production level or in the variety of the product so it is only possible in the automated flow lines that are in line type rather we can produce high quantity high production rate in the rotary but it is only be suitable when the product design is stable and it is unlikely to change in the near future so you can see this is from the figure that whenever the raw material is entering into the uh flow line you can see we are having the five kinds of stations from where the product uh, is being passed we are processing uh we are processing the operations on the 
specimen let us say five kinds of operations are being performed on the five stations so first figure is showing the auto automated the inline automated flow lines that is the inline because you can see the specimen is flowing in only in one directions but if there is any space constraint it can move to the 90 degree to the to the left hand side or to the right hand side that depends upon the space constraint or the design of the shop floor which is being or the placing of the machines in the shop floor this is the first you can see first figure is of the inline flow line whereas in the rotary flow line as i already told you that the machines are placed in the circular manner or in the rotary manner and whenever the operations are being performed these are being suitable only for the high production level that is there is no change in the product is being required in the coming years then it is being desirable that the, these rotary flow lines are being installed in industry which are being producing the only the similar kind of products and you can see this is the starting of the product this and there are on there are you can see five workstations are there at which the operations are being performed on the specimen so the after the uh, every operations on every station the uh, workpiece is keep on moving the machines are being fixed only the table is being rotating which is transporting the workpiece from one end to other end so at the last point or at the last point you can see this is the exit exiting point of the pipe so here you can see as soon as the part is reaches here so you can check that all the operations that are being required have been completed or have been carried out on the specimen so this is the way or this is the layout how inline or the rotary flow lines are being installed in the industry the second application is the automated machining operations so you can see there are different kinds of operations that are being required to be performed at the different times or you can say there is always be variation in the sequence of operations if there is a change from the market side or change from the consumer side so automated machines basically perform a sequence of operations at the same time on the different workstations so we have different kinds of automated machines which are being required in the nowadays in the industries the first one are the dial indexing machines the dial indexing machines are what which we i have told you in the previous slide that is this uh, the machines which are being installed in the rotary flow lines are called the dial indexing machine so you can see this these machines which are being situated in the uh, in this manner in the rotary manner where the table is being rotating and the machines are being fixed and the certain kinds of operations are being found on the specimen so this is being considered as a dial indexing machines so the parts are being fixed tightly onto the circular table called dial and it is being rotated between the successive stations and second is the trunian machines so they are having uh, certainly having a vertical drum that is called trunian on which the several fixtures are being mounted and holding the you know, specimens to perform the different kinds of operations we can change the sequence of operations like if earlier we were uh, performing five kinds of operations in a sequence of 2 1 3 4 5 and certainly if there is a change in the design or change in the sequence of operations then we have to we can perform by installing these three union union machines in the industry that is the variation can be 2 3 1 5 4 so these kinds of operations can be performed using the union machines and last are the transfer lines so these are highly versatile machines having the uh, variety of fixtures and jigs are being installed on the machine so what are jigs and fixtures which are basically uh, you can see sometimes you cannot install or you can sometimes you cannot assemble uh, the specimen directly on the onto the machines or you can say you cannot assemble the tool on the spindle tool uh, onto the spindle at once or directly so you need some jigs you need some jigs and fixtures like machine wise like c clamps those so these are the fixtures or jigs which are being used to assemble or to connect the specimen with the forza chuck or we can say spindle with the tool like in the case of the of the pen drive you always require a usb port so similarly some specimens are of the complex shape they cannot be 
installed or they cannot be assembled directly to the forja chuck at that point you need some kinds of uh, medium that is that you can that at one end it can be connected easily to the forja chuck and at other end it can be connected to the specimen so the medium or the intermediate part that is connecting the specimen with the forja chuck or the tool with the spindle that is called the jigs and fixtures so transfer lines are versatile in nature and are basically being uh, holding the uh, different kinds of parrot fixtures and also uh, a transfer lines can accommodate up to around 30 to 35 workstations with the storage of the material also and the tools can automatically selected and performing the operations as per the set of instructions which are being set up during the starting the machines next application is the automated assembly lines so you we will be understanding this automated assembly lines so you can see here we are having the aas that is automated assembly lines employs workstations at the workstations where we are uh, reducing the human effort you can see here the workpiece is being carried out at the workpiece table or at the cnc machines without any assistance of the human being the automated assembly systems also sometimes helps in the line balancing line balancing means if let us say at the uh, we have to perform five kinds of operations on the specimen and the uh, all operations have to be performed on the five machines that is each machine is performing single operation then let us say the 2 1 3 are uh, taking lesser time operations but 4 and 5 are taking more time so line balancing is basically the problem which is being used to arrange the individual process and assembly uh, task at the different workstation in such a manner that the total time required at each workstation is almost the same that is if 2 1 3 are taking lesser time and 4 5 are taking more time so we have to balance the line that is we have to minimize the time so that all the operations are taking the almost requiring the same time so let us say uh, 2 1 3 is performing in the lesser time and 4 5 in more time so the line balancing means we are uh, managing the operation sequence or we are managing the process plan in such a way that and that the total time required at each workstation will be almost will be same so this is due to the reason that when the workstation times are unequal and the slower stations that determines the overall production rate so the uh, the point or the workstation which is taking more time is generally basically defines the overall production rate so let us say uh, i have told i am saying that 2 1 3 is taking lesser time and 4 5 operations are taking more time so the time which is taken maximum by that operation let us say five fifth operation is taking the maximum time for the all the operations out of all the operations then uh, the maximum time will be considered as the main main be considered as the line balancing time for the whole of the component which is being used to process on the specific on the machine so aas can be classified also and they they are having you can say they are, we are having hoppers we are having part feeders we are having feed tracks we are having escapement devices so what is hopper it is basically containers which is being used to load the workpiece on the workstation you can see we are having the parts are being improperly oriented feed in back into the hopper and the part feeder that removes the component from the hopper and supplying that component using the selector from the hopper to the workpiece table so hopper and part feeders are mainly combined with one, with the one mechanism you can see the components are being fed from the hopper in the feed track and are being directly uh, supplied to the workpiece table here so feed track is what these there are basically you can see it is in the like in the way of the flyover so this is basically a ramp so it is applying or supplying the uh, specimen from the hopper to the workpiece table in the with the help of the gravity so they can be uh, gravity driven or if the situation is such like that they cannot uh, feed the specimen to the workpiece table with the help of the gravity then we need some external power so as to transport the material or transport the specimen from the hopper to the workpiece table so they are basically used to transfer components from hopper to the assembly lines 
and thereby maintaining the uh, parts orientation. That is, they are also uh, responsible for maintaining the actual position of the specimen so that the actual operation or the uh, point where the operation is to be performed must be under the tool spindle. So last is, is the escapement and placement devices. So they are basically used whenever the operation is being performed accurately or operation is being finished. These escapement and placement devices are basically used to remove the component from the regular uh, in, uh, from the track at the regular interval time and also from the uh, equal to the cycle time of the assembly. So escapement and placement devices are basically removing the specimen from the workpiece table and supplying it to the uh, automated flow lines and hence they are being transported to the other machine, other location. Next is the next application is the automated guided vehicles. That is how you are transporting the material from one uh, location to the other location locations. So AGVs are basically the material handling systems which are being nowadays uh, uh, operated independently. They are self-propelled vehicles and they are guided on the preset underground pathways or the reflected paints on the shop floors and they are basically driverless trains and move along the predetermined routes and also the traffic in the route is being controlled by the onboard sensors by the uh, optical or the ultrasonic sensors and vehicles are being avoided uh, for, and being stopped to collisions with the help of the sensors which are being installed in the KGVs. And they are basically driverless trains that moves loads along the predetermined path. So the main advantage of AGV over conveyor system is that they are programmable and they are, there is no chances of collision in between the material or in between the AGVs. That is, they are flexible and also the cost effective. There are basically two types of automated guided vehicles. First one are the wire guided and second are the, are the painted line guided AGVs. So what is wire guided AGVs? They are uh, cables which are being they are made up of the cables which are being buried in the rectangular channels under the floors of the shop floors and they are being used to guide the AGVs as well as the small magnetic plates which are being fixed at the floor at some junctions places give signals and provide the signals to the AGVs during the motion it generally works as that of the optical fiber works to transmit the network from one end to other end and these junctions are normally employed at the sharp ends in the network and the cables and these cables are basically steering for the communication cables. Whereas in the case of the painted guided AGVs, we are using the photo sensors and using the intensity of the fluorescence of the ultrasonic light which is being affected by the guideline painted of the fluorescent dye. So a fluorescent dye is being painted on the shop floor and by receiving the signal from the photo sensors, the material is being transferred from one end to other end. And these sensors send signals to the amplified and comparing to obtain the correct error signals to bring the AGVs back on the painted lines. And if there is any error onto the that, then photo sensors are sensing the signal to the AGVs and they are again back onto their track and transporting the material from in between the two points. Next will be the ASRS, that is the Automated Storage Retrieval Systems. So how we are storing the material, how we are handling the material and retrieving the materials with ease, precision and speed under the automation. So rest we'll do in the tomorrow's class.